Test one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. This conference will begin in exactly three minutes. And uh, for anyone who needs the spellings of the names, we have, um, it's homicide number 58 for 2016. This is the homicide of Julian Jones, J-U-L-I-A-N-J-O-N-E-S is the last name. 26 years old. We will have two speakers today. Inspector Brian Bott, that's B-R-Y-A-N, B-O-T-T -T of Homicide, and D uh, Detective Sergeant Gary Giroux. Last name is G-I-R-O-U-X. The conference will begin in exactly two minutes. This conference will begin in exactly one minute. Thirty seconds. <laughs> Ten. Good morning, and thank you very much for coming to Toronto Police Headquarters. Um, today I'd like to introduce Detective Sergeant Gary Giroux and Inspector Brian Bott, both of Homicide, who will be updating us on the investigation of Homicide Number 58, which is the homicide of Julian Jones, 26 years old. Sir. Good morning, and thank you for coming. I'd like to provide you, the media, and the public with an update with respect to the murder of Julian Jones, which is homicide 50, 58th for 2016. On Friday, the 4th of November, shortly before midnight, the deceased Julian Jones and eight of his friends attended the Blind Tiger Lounge located at 559 College Street in the city of Toronto. The deceased and his friends were here from the United States to participate in a bachelor party. Unfortunately, at approximately 2.25 hours on the 5th of November, while the patrons were exiting the lounge, the deceased and his friends were set upon by a group of males wanting to fight. The deceased at that point became separated from his friends, all of whom did not want to take part in any altercation. A short time later, the deceased was discovered unconscious on the roadway. Ambulance and EMS was called immediately. The victim was rushed to St. Michael's Hospital, but tragically succumbed to his injuries. The homicide squad was deployed and took carriage of this investigation. Immediately, homicide investigators experienced tremendous cooperation and support from the public and the, and the management and employees from the Blind Tanger Lounge. 
Tremendous support and cooperation was also received from the area vendors and commercial premises regarding the collection of surveillance video. This cooperation led to significant witness participation and the sharing of digital images with the investigators. Witness participation is a catalyst that allows me to stand here before you today and advise you that on Wednesday, November 9th, two persons were taken into custody without incident. They are Kenneth Ormogrogby, 25 years of Toronto. I can spell that for you if you like. And Kamari Folks, 24 years of Toronto. We are alleging both accused played a role in the events that led to the critical injuries and subsequent death of Julian Jones. Both men have been charged with second degree murder and are appearing at Old City Hall courts this morning. We are not prepared to release photos of the accused at this time and I'm requesting that members of the media not seek to publish social media photos of the accused parties as it would compromise future photographic lineups yet to be completed. This investigation is very active and ongoing and investigators are attempting to identify others responsible for the attack upon the deceased. There are still witnesses who are prepared to look at video collected for the purpose of identifying other suspects. So in such, such time as that process is exhausted, images will not be released to the general public. Investigators would like to speak to other members of the public that were present during the altercation. Any person that may possess images from that evening, evening anyone with information that may assist the investigation. Homicide investors can be reached at 416-808-7400. Uh, I'm sure you appreciate this as an ongoing investigation, but Detective Sergeant Gary Drew, who's the lead investigator, is here and can take some questions from you, if you like. Gary? The name? Yes. It's O-M-O-R-O-G-B-E. But is it Kamani Omorogby and then... Kenneth, Kenneth. Kenneth Omorogby and Kamari Folks. Folks is F O. No. No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. So, um, Detective Schroeder, Detective Sergeant, can you just tell us, are these two guys the main suspects that we were looking for? Because I know you were looking for 79 men originally. So are these the two main suspects that uh, you had requested the public look at? Yeah, I would say they're the main suspects. There's, there's another individual, as Detective North originally released. So there's a, there's a, there's a white suspect uh, that's responsible. These are, the allegations are kicking and stomping of uh, semi-conscious Julian Jones while he's on the ground. So there's another individual that we're looking at and we have video from inside the blind tiger that we have witnesses that are prepared to look at. And that's why uh, the inspector indicated that we don't want images of the offenders out there. We want witnesses such as patrons and security staff to look at the video and to narrate it for us because we do have uh, security staff and we do have witnesses that witness the attack on the deceased person. So we want them to look at it and say, okay, this is the individual I saw kicking, this is the individual I saw stomping, and we don't want it to be compromised by the release of photographs to the, to the, the general public. The these are the two you're looking for. You Sorry? Feel the, you feel these are the two prime people you were looking for? The, these are definitely people who have been identified by witnesses as being uh, people who are a uh, party to the attack upon the deceased, but there, there are at least one other individual that we're looking for. So until, until the investigation is thoroughly flushed out and completed, we don't want uh, images out, uh, you know, out into the public uh, forum. Uh, I may send investigators down to the United States to do photo lineups. Um, the, the challenge that we had is that as soon as as soon as that uh, his friends were interviewed um, by my investigators, they immediately went home to the United States. So I didn't have the opportunity to call them back in as I've done with the security staff. I've had the security staff in several times to view video as it's being collected to say, take a look at this video, take a look at this video. What do you see here? What do you see here? And they've always been cooperative and they responded to me immediately. They've dropped whatever they have going in their lives and they've come in and looked at the video. The difficulty is that the, the five to eight friends that were there are gone now. So I don't have the ability to do that and I want to do that now and I may have to go there or I may have to ask the Baltimore or Maryland Police Service to do that on our behalf. So I don't want the prosecution to be compromised by um, you know, the media putting their pictures out and then having my officers go there and say, well, I've already seen the offenders, I know what they look like. And, and I've also called them, uh, my investigators have called them, and I've instructed them, don't you go on to social media sites and don't you look for them uh, so as to spoil any potential photographic lineups that might be done. Can you 
description as to this third particular man that you're looking for? Can you give us a description as, as to how he looks? Uh, again, it's the one that Detective North uh, gave me, uh, gave you originally uh, on day one. So, you know. Yep, and like I say, we have a we have a, a group of uh, of the the suspects inside the bar. You can see them moving around um, as a group uh, within the Blind Tiger, and so like I say, I, that's the best evidence as I would describe it as to what the Crown Attorneys would say. So I would take that video and I would play it for the witnesses and I would play it for the friends of the deceased and say, okay, narrate it. Who's this? Who's this? What's their role? Uh, did you see them participate in the attack upon the deceased person? That's yet to be done. The third person you're looking for, uh, is he also, uh, was he allegedly involved in the death as well? Absolutely. The murder charge? Exactly. Yep, that's right. So these three did are facing murder charges then? This, this individual, if we're successful in, first of all, identifying him, he would be a participant in the kicking, stomping of Julian Jones while he's down in an unconscious state on Manning Avenue. What are they facing? Yeah, I mean, there's a confrontation, uh, you know, on, on Manning Avenue on the south side of College Street, but Mr. Jones and his friends are, are not the aggressors. Was there a, um, a laptop or computer of some sort that, was, uh, that helped you get to this point uh, that was seized during the investigation? <coughs> a, I would describe some of the, some of the key evidence as some cell phone video. Sorry, can you just give us one more time the description of that third individual that you're still looking for? Uh, it's, it's pretty much what you've heard, uh, you know, male white, um, late 20s, um, you know, 160 to 180 pounds, uh, you know, casual clothing. Um, I, I have an image of him in and amongst this group of individuals. Um, my difficulty is that um, I, I just don't have any uh, urgency to, to put him out because I need to meet with the security staff here in Toronto to show it for to them and have them narrate it, and then potentially I have to send investigators to the United States to do the same thing there. The two men that you've arrested, what charges are they facing? Second degree murder, jointly charged. So that cell phone video, uh, was it taken by one of the uh, accused? Is it off their phone? It was taken by one of the friends of the deceased from Maryland. Have you ever bought the other friends or the other people who were with this group of the accused and the two who were arrested, have they come forward? Have any of them come forward to police? N nobody from the offenders group have come forward. But as, but as you know from what I've just told you, we have pictures of them and we'll be work, working our way towards their identifications as well. Detective, I'm just curious. Um, sometimes in cases like this, it's hard to get people to come forward and cooperate. But in this case, because it was somebody from out of town, out of country, and Torontonians are generally protective of the reputation of their city as being a very welcoming, open place. Did you find maybe that people were more willing to talk or did that not really play a role as far as you're concerned? I, I just think, uh, you know, in relation to this investigation, the people in this particular area of the city were very cooperative. The management and the security staff and the patrons were very eager to speak to the police. We had absolutely no cooperation. I have called the security staff and the management to come at all hours of the day and night with regards to the video and to call the security staff in on multiple occasions to view the video. I've had absolutely no pushback at all, so I'm very grateful to them. Now, the remaining men, the remaining five, six men, um, are you still looking to speak to them, the men that were in this group? Oh, of course. Of, of course. I mean, well, I'm, the, the individuals who are with the offenders, uh, I'm eager to speak to them uh, voluntarily you know, for them to come to me on their own. And if they're not willing to come to me on their own, then I'll be coming to them. Do you know who they are? Well, I'll be making efforts as I did in relation to the offenders. I'll be putting their pictures to the field intelligence officers within the various divisions, say, tell me who they are, which is exactly what we did here. And uh, the Toronto police officers who knew the offenders identified them to me, and that's how we found out who they were. What specifically led you to them, though? Was there a specific tip that led you to these two guys? We, we had uh, images of who they were, and then we distributed those images uh, to Toronto police officers, and they were identified to us. Detective, it may sound like a stupid question, but you believe that this third person knows these other two suspects, and they're all friends or acquaintances or whatever? They all came as a group. So one of the things that uh, the inspector said was that, that, that his friends, that Jones' friends didn't want to fight. So was there, in fact, a fight between Jones and these men? A bit more about that? Well, I think there's there's probably some raised voices outside, but I, I know from the fact that um, what I did now 
Um, there's been some, some physical blows, you know, that have uh, been received by the deceased friends. And uh, the deceased was separated, and he was in a helpless condition on the ground, and the wounds that he received, uh, he, he received in a vulnerable position on the ground. Is that what you're looking for? He would also face second-degree murder then? He would. So you said there's at least one suspect that you're looking for in the two that have already been charged. Is there an indication of just how many people are involved in the kicking and the stomping? Um, I'm going to continue to review video, but as it stands right now, if I can identify this one additional individual, that would be it for the time being, unless I, unless I find something else. Are you looking for more witnesses at this point, or do you have... Always looking for more witnesses. We have a lot of witnesses, but I'm always looking for more. Were the friends uh, able to see what was happening with Julian Jones? Or, uh, well, I mean, they, they, uh, they, have, they have a portion of the narrative, and the security staff have the other portion of the narrative, and some witnesses in the area have a portion, so together we have so most of it. I can't, I can't comment on all of it based on the evidence, but I mean, there's, there's enough for us to put virtually it all together. Has uh, Mr. Jones's family been notified and, and what have, that arrests and charges have been made and what have they said? Yeah, in, fa in fairness, I mean, uh, I, I think, you know, that they were called last night because he did comment on it, so we didn't want them to hear, hear about it in, the, in this t particular forum. So we called his father last night um, to let them know that this would be happening this morning. and. Um, he took a lot of comfort in knowing that people had been apprehended for what happened to his son. Any other questions? I'm sorry? Can you say any more about the two accused? They live in the city, obviously. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just guarded about that because the fact is that it's going to be an identification-based prosecution. Uh, it's not going to be a forensic case. It's going to be, it's going to be that's the person responsible for what happened to, to Mr. Jones. And my concern is that, um, you know, we have to demonstrate to the jury that that's, we have the appropriate people being identified, and it's going to come down to us showing photographic lineups and showing video and et cetera. And I don't want to maintain the integrity of that portion of it. Did you just talk about the, the, the two suspects uh, who were charged, the two, two men who have been charged? Uh, any prior criminal record, gang affiliation, anything like that? They, they have some past criminal baggage, yes. Okay, so are you bringing these young men from Maryland back here to see a police lineup? Is that the intent? You said because I understand what you mean about bringing it to Maryland to bring the suspects to Maryland. Or are you no, bring no, I, no. So, so what, no. what would you do? What would the I, I think the potential is that I might send investigators to Maryland, you know, with our process of showing photographic lineups, Canadian uh, procedures in showing photographic lineups. We may go there, and and do interviews there and show lineups to them there. The guy that was built like a football player, right? We do. And the other, the other suspect, you described him to us. Um. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'd rather not because, like I say, it's it's going to it's he's it would be part of the identification process. So. Um, we, do, we don't have the white suspect yet, and that's going to be part of the ongoing investigation. We, we have two black suspects in custody, um, and you're free to go to court and look at them, but uh, we have an outstanding male white suspect that we're going to continue our investigation into, and that's my focus right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes today's conference.